Hello, good afternoon and welcome back to the fish locker in the Florida Keys. I'm on holiday with my family in the Florida Keys at the moment. This is our accommodation. We've literally just arrived. This is our first morning. We got here late last night and it just so happens that we have a dock that leads right out to Florida Keys. We're at Key Colony West and all I've managed to do is I brought a rod tube, I brought a fishing rod tube, I brought a couple of three rods my reels and I've literally I've just brought a box of tackle now it's just odds and sods some bits of line some hooks some floats some sinkers some shovels and I'm just going to be making it up as I go along <laughs> pretty much is what I do I just make it up as I go along now I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to be catching but what I'm hoping to catch just from knowing the area is some snappers possibly like we call them bream they call them pinfish maybe some catfish and some barracuda that's the type of fish that i'm expecting are going to be living in these waters here now i'm going to knock some rigs up first of all i'm going to try some some rigs on the bottom some suspended and some float fished knowing what i know about the species i'm expecting to try and pick up some small fish like some some little tiny i'd, I'd call them bream scratching fish pinfish and use those as live baits to catch the barracuda that is the plan I'll show you, I'll show you how I'm hoping to do it. All I've done is I've tied three way swivel with about a foot length of 40 pound mono to another three way swivel and I've got the little size eight bait holder hooks on there. Now that is just a two hook scratching rig. It's just a two hook scratching rig for anything fish. Big fish, small fish, pin fish, pan fish, any fish. And some other ones I'm gonna run, I'm, I'm going to be fishing like on this rod here, I don't know if you can see that, I've got a little jig head, I've got a little jig head just like that, all that is is instead of just having a plain hook it's got a little bit more weight to the hook, I think that's an eighth of an ounce, so it's just meaning you're almost free lining but with just a little bit of extra weight just to help it sink, now the reason why I wanted that is because I don't know if you can see, there is, and you can see with the trees, there is a bit of wind blowing. Now it's just a time of year for me. If I was just going to free line straight away and I was going to cast a line out into this water with having no weight on the hook, you, you'll end up with a real big belly of line and the hook just won't sink. So that's why I'm using a jig head. On the other rigs, I'm going to hopefully catch some little fish, then use the little fish to catch some big fish. That's my plan. I don't know how well it's going to work, but that's my plan anyway. I'll get the rigs knocked up and I'll show you just before I cast out. All I'm using is I've got some frozen shrimps, well used to be frozen, now thawed out, which happens at 30 degrees, and I'm going to use some little pieces for the scratching baits. So I'm going to use something that size on a jig head and something that size on the scratching baits. So it's literally like that. That's how big one of those baits are. And for the jig head look, that's all it is. That's all I'm planning on doing. So it's just main line straight to a jig head. So that's the lead and the hook all in one. That's it. Hannah's decided to join me. That usually just means that she ends up catching more fish than me. Got my barracuda shoes on. Yeah, you're lucky barracuda shoes. Got a fish from scratching the regular drink. Um, I haven't tried this yet, what do I do? Swish it on the bottom? Oh, oh is that a trigger fish? Wild fish. Well, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> I'm sorry about the noise of the plane there. There is an airfield nearby. But that, of all of the possible fish that there is to catch here, that is not what I was expecting. Can you hear it? It's called a reticulated file fish. That's what I know them for. In Europe, that's what it would be. I've caught them before in Tenerife. 
but yeah that's it a little serrated spike there look like a trigger fish and they've got they feel like wet and dry paper but really tough skin I don't want to get my fingers too close to it, so I'm going to get a set of pliers and go nooking. We'll get him in that tub of water. What you got? What you got? <laughs> Typical. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking inside of its mouth before I put my fingers in there. It's like bright orange. It's Hannah has caught a blue striped gun, <laughs> a blue striped grunt. I also know these as a blondie. Caught these in Mexico. Remember that? On the jig head, look. You got like hard little mouths. Oh. Can you wear that? That's why it's called a grunt. But if you can see, bright orange inside of its mouth, isn't it? How beautiful is that? She wasn't going to be beaten, was she? <laughs> We're drawing one all. Stunning fish. You put him back. Straight back under the dock. Didn't wait for a photo, did it? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'll try and release this guy. It's just crackers. Every time you try and go anywhere near him, it's just, he bit, nearly bit me twice. Yeah, just incredible, aren't they? That spine there is just solid. See you later. All it is, just little tiny scraps of shrimp on a talk scratching rig. Now with Hannah there, I was explaining to her, because we've got the wind blowing down this way, rather than pointing a rod up towards the wind, is you cast your line up and hold your rod so that your line goes at a right angle to the rod tip. That way you see a bite better, like that. Oh, whoa. Got, oh, what was that? No. We'd be sore fighting that then, but that'd look like a good one. Yes. We lived here and we had this at the bottom of our garden, we'd never leave the house. One of the problems about using shrimp like this is it's just very soft, and the fish that we're fishing for. They're like little piranhas. They're just straight in there with like a hitting. They're just like bream. And they just shred it. If you miss them after like one or two bites, one bite generally is what you've got. Two if you're lucky. If you've missed it, you need to change a bit. We are just talking there, we were getting loads of bites and they were almost instant as soon as we've got in. And now they've almost completely stopped. I know there's fish there because the baits are coming back and they're all stripped. So I think what's happened possibly is a barracuda has moved in and he's hidden somewhere either underneath part of the dock or some of those bushes because the fishing's just turned off like that. So if that means that Hannah and I, if we can catch a little tiny fish like that, I might be able to put that down as a live bait for the barracuda. Well, Hannah's winning. One of the things that I've noticed pretty quick is that every single species around here is covered in spines all the way on top of there's a spike those are spikes those are spikes I think it's just because of the amount of pred like predator species there are around there all the sharks and barracudas and things now I couldn't use that as a live bait I don't know about you it's far too pretty Far too pretty to use as a live bait. The 
bikes have dropped off completely. It's made me think that there is a barracuda around somewhere. So what I've done is scaled right down to the tiniest hooks possible and it's found another type of snapper. Now, I don't know if you can see those fangs in there, but yeah, there's no way. Usually I'll put my hand inside of its mouth to hold it, but we'll have to get the pliers on that. He's bitten the hook off. He's bitten the hook off and rather than leave the hook in his mouth, Maybe show you the fangs. See him? Yeah. Some form of snapper. He really is try he's trying to bite me constantly. Stop it. There you go. Now there are some little tiny silverfish, I know because I've seen them. And I think they're called somewhat like a silver jenny. If I can try and catch one of those, I am absolutely positive that there is a barracuda around somewhere because the fish, they're just gone. And as soon as I can catch a little one, hopefully I'll be able to catch the big one. That is the little fish that I was looking for. Like I say, I think they're called a silver jenny. Now that I have a fish suitable for a live bait, this is my live bait rig here. All I've got is I have a sliding float up my leader. I have a braid main line and then I have a flow row leader to a heavy swivel. I've then made a trace up that's a foot of 60 pound flow row to a 6 o circle hook. That's it. Sliding float to a flow row trace. Now some people will say to use steel traces. I personally don't like steel traces because I found that they can damage the fish. Damage the fish's mouth. Also, if you ever snap off in a fish and you're using a steel trace, you can pretty much guarantee that it's going to kill that fish. Whereas a fluoro trace, eventually, it will wear through. Right, I'll rig up this live bit and then we'll see if we can't catch a barracuda. Right, that's it. Sliding float, fluoro leader, circle hook, live bit. Barracuda's got it. It's only a little. It's only a little barracuda. I can see it in its mouth. I could see the barracuda, the barracuda was only about that big, so it couldn't get the whole fish in its mouth. Yeah, all you're looking for there is either the float going down or the float running off. And I don't know if you can see it. Maybe just. It's just down on the other side of this post here and the float just started going whoosh. But yeah, it was a barracuda that was like that big. Knew there was one there though, absolutely knew there was one there. That's one of the things I just love about this is I've never fished here before. I could, I could honestly, I could catch anything. For the people who live here, it's probably boring. These type of fish are, well, probably aren't. Whoa. Tell you what. That is a pinfish. I recognise this. I do recognise this one. It's a lot like our black brain. Called a pinfish because they are just covered in spikes. I 
don't know if you can see, but they've got like electric blue lines all over them. Stunning little fish. Too big for a live bait though. Yeah, there could be absolutely anything. Any species that I catch is likely to be a new one. Nailing it now. Have you not noticed it? As soon as I put a hook into that barracuda, I mean, yeah, it got off because I didn't, it didn't get the whole fish in its mouth. But as soon as that barracuda has been spooked, the fish will start coming back. I knew, I knew there must have been one there. Which is, even though I don't know the area, it's the same as predator species. It's, it's the same as when you roach fishing and there's a pike turns up. I'll tell you one thing for certain: <laughs> don't leave your rod unattended down here. I've got the tiniest, tiny scratching rig on. Now these hooks, actually, how big are they? That big. They're absolutely tiny. I've got them on to scratch around to see if I can find whatever little tiny things are still in my bait. Just dropped this, like, probably a four mil scrap of prawn. Put it down on the floor while I was busy doing some. Rod, end at rod tip just was like just so luckily enough if I had my foot on it otherwise it'd have been in the water I thought oh my god this one's gonna be a monster it's got to be like a 10 pound fish these little snappers pull back <laughs> again little tiny fangs in there just a little hook there in the scissors there we go. See that snapping? Ah. <laughs> yeah, they bite and they hurt. Tell you what, if you go a six pounder, it will take any of your finger off. A lovely little fish. They've got like a blue stripe under their eye. You didn't see that properly. They're lovely. Oh yeah. They've got like little tiny fangs up top. And they do go. You could you could see it going. <sighs> yeah. No more barracuda though after that little one, which is a little bit disappointing. Just keep trying. I'm going to have to. We've got quite a lot of clouds coming on, and the wind is picking up, so it looks like it might rain in a bit. I might have to knock this on the head, and I'll just carry it on. Well, staying just up there. <laughs> carry it on another day. We'll see. All I'm doing is exactly the same as yesterday. The method worked. We had fish, so I knew it was right. Let's try it again. That one there has got barracuda written all over it. The live baiting I've done before in the UK, you might have seen it quite a lot in my sea fishing videos for bass, using uh, pilchards, sand eels, mackerel. You can either hook them through the jaw, as in through the upper lip, or you can hook them through the back. If you hook them, if you think of the fish being this long and the centerpiece being its dorsal fin, if you hook them behind the dorsal fin towards the tail they swim down if you hook them in front they generally swim up so i want i'm going to fish this from a float so i want it to swim down so i'm going to hook it just behind the dorsal fin down. just behind the dorsal fin so that'll swim down i don't know if you can see over there that float you'll see it start digging there look that's the fish swimming down. Now that fish, because it's small, the reason why I wanted a small one is not only because the barracuda around here, from what I saw yesterday, they're not massive, they're not, they're more like a couple of pound. I lost one yesterday because the bait fish I, the bait fish I used was too big to fit fully inside the barracuda's mouth, so it just, it just mashed it up. And also, if I use a real big live bait, it'll sink the float, and I don't want it to. 
I'm using the float to keep it suspended and also for bike detection. So there like that, you can see Bob. See the Barracuda taking the float there. It's just too small to get the hook into. Yeah, the little barracuda is about a foot long. And the fish, it's, it's the baits that I'm using, I've had to use tiny ones to try and catch them. Because all the other ones I'm catching are like this size. And it's, it's holding it in its mouth and chomping it and biting it in half, and then the hook's falling out. <laughs> yeah, he's had a good dig at that. Just behind the hook. <laughs> what a bugger. Bugger. You are not going to believe this. I, I barely believe it myself. It was absolutely incredible. I was, um, I was busy fishing away. I've got, a live bit, I've got a live bit out right now. I am determined to catch a barracuda for camera. I've gone through like eight, eight live baits now. Busy fishing away and as I have done in the UK in the past, I've put a GoPro down on the seabed chopped up like a little little bottle of fish stuck that down there so somewhat for the camera to focus on see if I could show you some more some of the fish behaving underwater anyway busy fishing away and all of a sudden like a what, I mean, what is that it was massive like I'm talking this round and longer than me it was a manatee now all the panic going on I ran into the house to go and get Hannah and the kids and everyone they all come out. I didn't get any video footage. Hopefully Hannah got some on her phone. But it was right down on top of where I put the GoPro. And I was thinking, I was kind of thinking to myself, I thought, oh no, I said, what happens if it eats a GoPro? What happens? Anyway, I, I've waited for it to leave. <laughs> I didn't really fancy getting in the water with it. I mean, I know they're supposed to be harmless, but it was monstrous. If it took a liking to me, I don't think I could have fought it off. Anyway, I've checked the GoPro footage. I'm going to put it in here now. It is incredible. I hope you enjoy it. As the seabed here is quite silty and there isn't much tide, the water is quite murky. But you can see there are Majora fish everywhere. And the odd snapper. Until a barracuda shows up. And another little one. A mangrove crab fancies his chances. And then a nurse shark comes in to stir things up. When everything settles again, those yellowfin majoras are back in numbers. Until this happens. Now they are massive. I do wonder if it could sense some electronic field around the camera underwater, as it does come in and give it a good sniff a couple of times. Scars on its back, haven't it? And uh, I've just been out for a bite to eat, taking all the kids out. Hannah stayed here to do a little bit of work. Got back and I was like, Where's Hannah? Can't find it anywhere. <laughs> There's Hannah. <laughs> There's Hannah with the barracuda.
You can see why I married her, can't you? Teeth in there. Oh. Right, stand back. See, I've got some wicked teeth in there. Another one I've got, I've been fishing for about 15 minutes, just with a little bit of prawn, just a single hook on the bottom, and this is a mangrove snapper that I can't even catch when it's in a bucket. <laughs> it's a lovely looking fish. Whoop. Put him back. Mm -hmm. I feel like my hair is a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hope you've enjoyed joining us. All the very best. See you later.